talk vacation, shall we? And, and specifically timeshares. Uh, as you know, they sometimes can have a, a bit of a bad reputation depending on who you talk to about them. There are horror stories about rundown resorts, owners losing a lot of money. Uh, but timeshare trends are making a comeback, and it's Gen Z and millennials making it happen. News Nation business contributor Gary B. Smith joins us. Uh, Gary, I think uh, you're going to have some opinions on this one, as I like to say. Um, let's break it down. The American Resort Development Association says the average age of a timeshare owner today is now 39. Um, but timeshares develop such a bad reputation. Many experts saying it's not a smart investment. It doesn't appreciate. It often sells for pennies on the dollar. So what's changing? Why are they making a comeback? <laughs> well, you're, first of all, happy Monday. It's nice to happy see you, Mark. Happy Monday, Gary B. Of course I have opinions on this. <laughs> now, let me give you the, the pro as I see it. First of all, the, the timeshares, I suppose, of my generation are different than the timeshares now in that they're a lot more flexible. They're easier to get out of. They offer more options. I can't imagine the number of properties Marriott, for example, which is one of the biggest, has now versus what it did, you know, even 10, 15 years ago. It's, it's probably 90. Grown, <laughs> it, it, it's, yeah. it, you know, it's grown exponentially. Um, and you can you you can do more with your timeshare value, if you will, mm -hmm. trade it in for airline miles things like that. So it's become a lot more flexible. Now, as you point out, the downsides are still there. I I looked at doing the, we're, we're not too far from Orlando. So we looked at doing the Disney timeshares years ago. And just the, as you point out, the amount of money you put in, you, you do get, of course, some flexibility, a lot of flexibility, but that's sunk cost. You're investing twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars, and then you got to pay that annual fee. So we gave up then a lot of flexibility. Some years or weeks we wanted to take vacation, others we didn't. You can get discounts on hotels. So there is a lot of trade-offs, I think, to the downside on this. Yeah. Still. And you got to think about, will you always want to travel? Will you always get that kind of time off? Uh, Gary, you and I have talked, you know, the last several months about inflation, interest rates being sky high, keeping people from buying, upgrading homes, post-COVID, people want experiences. So are people now turning, this is what I was thinking this morning, are people now turning to timeshares as an alternative, maybe more affordable path to status and experience since home ownership is, you know, seeming to be off the table for many? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, a lot, there's a, a lot of people in that, you know, as you point out, the Gen Z, the millennials, who don't want to own a home, probably can't, maybe can't even afford a home, but yeah. kind of still want the uh, the lifestyle, the higher end lifestyle to go to some of these places. For those people, you know, this can be a great deal. In fact, if done correctly, you can actually save money on, if you want to go to Monaco or something, you know, the cost of hotels there is probably going to be more expensive than if you did it through timeshares, assuming your timeshare is going to give you access to places like you know, Monaco and Vail and some of those higher end places. Okay, it can be, you know, a really good idea. Yeah, and I know that uh, you've told our team it's it's probably still cheaper to just go to a hotel uh, and pay for that, you know, in, in your favorite spots uh, instead of the timeshare. Gary B., always good to see you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.